400,000 visitors each year visit the La Brea Tar Pits Museum in Los Angeles to see the amazing collection of fossils gathered from those still active pits. Two recent visitors, forensic specialists from the Department of Fish and Wildlife, weren't here to see the fossils, but to take tusk samples back to their lab in Sacramento for testing. It's all part of the department's mission to help reduce the worldwide problem of elephants being killed for their ivory. Californians pride themselves on their commitment to environmental stewardship, yet California remains a hub of ivory trafficking throughout the United States. Ivory in the form of elephant tusks, mammoth and mastodon tusks, but also ivory from other animals you don't think about as much, hippopotamus, warthog. As wildlife officers, what we're trying to do is stop that demand. We are trying to catch these people as they are attempting to traffic in ivory, not just the people who are selling, but also the people who are buying, to end the demand entirely and ultimately help the elephants that live half a world away. It's been illegal for decades to buy or sell ivory from elephants and other animals, but there was an exemption in the laws when it came to mammoths and mastodons because they were extinct. That exemption gave traffickers the chance to claim it was a legal specimen they were trading. A state law passed in 2016, AB 96, eliminated that exemption. Now it's illegal to traffic in all ivory. Part of the process for making an ivory case is to, first of all, go out and find those who are trying to traffic in the sale or buying of ivory. But once that identification is made, you can seize the products, you can arrest the poachers or the ivory traffickers, and now you gotta actually prosecute the case. And that's why forensic specialists Ashley Spicer and Kelly Carruthers travel to the tar pits in LA and the Western Science Center in Riverside County as part of this effort. To prosecute people who buy or sell ivory from a variety of animals, Fish and Wildlife has to build a database of DNA from those animals at the tar pits, they carefully collected test tubes of shavings from a Colombian mammoth tusk. In Hemet, at the Western Science Center, they gathered samples from a Pacific mastodon. Once we put laws in place that are um, trying to restrict this trade, one of the key parts to being able to enact that law is to know exactly what it is you're looking at and to be able to demonstrate definitively, yes, this ivory came from an African elephant or from a mammoth or from a mastodon or whatever. The passage of AB 96 also funded the lab and staff to do the work that cracks down on ivory trade in California. Collecting samples is one thing, proving the exact species is another, requiring days, if not months, of precise lab work. One of the reasons that going to La Brea and the Western Science Center was so important was to obtain these ivory specimens and samples for the ivory genetic database for casework applications and previously we did not have either Pacific Mastodon or Colombian Mammoth in our database. So we'll be able to extract the DNA from those ivory samples and specimens and use them in our ivory genetic database for future casework. An estimated 100 elephants are killed each day for their ivory. California officials believe making it illegal to trade all ivory, regardless of the species it came from, will make that criminal effort far less attractive. Since AB 96 was passed, the department's wildlife forensics lab has worked on nearly 30 cases of alleged ivory trafficking. The laboratory capability that we have today helps us differentiate between ivory that's taken from an elephant that was poached in Africa within the last few years versus ivory that was from an extinct species like a mammoth or a mastodon. This is huge for us. This is important so that we can actually prosecute these cases and convict these criminal poachers to make the cases that we couldn't make 10 years ago.